Well, hey everybody, Megan here, the faithful fibromyalgia warrior. It is 6.12 here in the evening in Colchester, England. For those of you who are new, uh, thank you for coming to this channel. I'm so glad you've decided to check out my videos. I really appreciate that. And for those of you who've been faithfully and loyally coming to my channel, checking out my live streams, commenting and sharing support and faith, that's awesome. I'm so, so glad for you guys. You know, um, I've decided today you get to see the office side of this room behind me. It was our younger son's room. He has decided he, he's moved back to Canada permanently, at least for, well, for now, however long that ends up being, I don't know. Um, so, it's here as a guest room now, but it's also where our Greyhound Billy likes to sleep. And I'll, I'll give you even a little quick glimpse. He is, oops, sorry, bed's messy. There he is. That's his space. Um, he's actually fantastic, and he's really, really settled in so well in the house. It's, it's, it's really great. But um, my younger son went to Canada last summer. Uh, to work as a chef um, at a resort that his older cousin, my husband's nephew, manages. He loved it, decided he was going to come home for a few weeks to visit just before, you know, just a couple weeks before Christmas. He flew back uh, beginning of December, but he decided he wants to stay. So we moved over to England uh, when he was six. So he has now gone back to Canada. So he's kind of doing the opposite of us. We've stayed here. But he's doing well. He has, he'll be applying for his apprenticeship papers to train as a sous chef. Uh, he was working as a line cook in the restaurant. He's now running the kitchen um, often on his own when it's his day to be there. It is a bit slower. The resort is in northern Ontario. Uh, in Muskoka, so it's not as busy at this time of year, but that's okay. Perfect for him to train, right? So he's doing great. So this room um, now has the computer in it and the filing cabinet and this chair, but it's also where the dog the, the dog sleeps. So it's the office, guest room, recording studio, spare bedroom, dog's room, whatever you want to call it. And it is great to have this space where I can make videos or live stream and talk to you guys. So today, it's kind of just a short video, but I was feeling inspired. You know, today I realized just how lucky I am having found the carnivorous way of eating. And I know that it was God guiding me to that through different different steps and different decisions I made and choices I, I made. Ultimately, what happened is I've, I've had a massive reduction in inflammation. My fibromyalgia brain fog is completely gone. My pain is there, but it is manageable. And I just, it's just part of life now. And I'm so thankful. This is absolutely, I believe at least, the way God intended for us to eat. He created the plants first, then the animals, for the animals to eat the plants, to get adapted, etc., etc., and then for us to eat the animals. And I think that's why it's laid out in that order in Genesis chapter 1, and that's why I'm convinced that in Genesis chapter 9, when Noah's being addressed, he's reminded that we are over all the plants, the animals as well, but like the plants are for the animals and then we eat the animals. And it makes sense, actually, when you think about it, because especially the ruminants, such as lambs and cows, and I believe bison and buffalo and oxen all have multiple chambered stomachs, which allows them to fully digest and process all the seeds, all the grasses, all the grains, 
and that gets converted into either muscle or fat on their bodies, which we then eat and has all the essential um, amino acids and, and all kinds of vitamins and everything, all the nutrients we need that we don't make ourselves. And so it was absolutely, uh, I believe it's God's plan for us to eat those things. That while there may be plants that we've adapted to as far as it's not going to kill us, most people, uh, certainly that I know, have some difficulty with every single type of plant that's considered edible, whether it's fruits or vegetables, uh, tubers, which are, I think are somewhere in between, um, which is why you're always told you've got to soak these, you've got to cook these properly. Why? To get rid of some of the toxins, even though you don't get rid of all of them. And because, let's be honest, anytime you eat fruit or vegetables, uh, it definitely has a... Um, an after effect right and that's without whether or not you have leaky gut or IBS in my case I had both now I'm almost symptom free just by eating beef mints with egg yolks bacon and a bit of salt and for me what I find helps me the most is I'm mixing very, very slowly, I'm mixing together 20% fat beef with 23%. I tried once doing 23% just straight on and it was not good. I, it, would, it did not go well. My digestive system needed time to adjust to the higher fat. And so kind of like, okay, so when we got our Greyhound Billy, he was on a specific diet from his previous owner because he had been he had he had been a racer so he was on like loads of kibble with egg yolks and a bit of fish and some oatmeal and even a bit of milk which as as, as he was training and racing didn't seem to bother him but when we first got him and you know I wanted to ease him in gently to a diet for a non-racing greyhound like what we would have fed our previous we've had previous greyhounds but I knew I had to do it slowly because greyhounds have notoriously sensitive stomachs and even though I did it I gradually started to cut back on his food he wasn't racing anymore he was learning how to chill and relax and do what he's doing right now um, and because of that, he didn't want to eat as much. So it was easier to do, right? But even then, there was a lot of gas in the room as he started to adjust. Now, there's virtually none. So that's just as, as an example. So thinking about that and thinking about myself, I knew that I would have to very, very slowly up the amount of the 23% beef that I'm eating. And the reason why is because I know for myself that when I have higher fat, uh, my skin is better, right? This is almost all cleared up. I, I get rosacea. And when I have higher fat, that doesn't seem to be the case. My eyebrows are almost fully back in. I have an underactive thyroid as well. And the higher fat is seems to be helping um, with my eyebrows growing back in. Um, I think it has a, definitely seems to be having an effect on my hair being a lot less dry and brittle. My fingernails are all normal. I don't know if you guys can see that, but... Um, they used to be cracked and splitting and they're not anymore and I've not used nail I never use nail varnish on my fingers I stopped putting nail varnish on my toenails and they're almost completely back to normal and I've noticed the biggest improvement was when I was upping my fat levels plus it is satiating when I eat if I'm out and I get a burger I know the burger is going to be either five or ten percent fat beef because that's typically what I found out from the book the butcher we go to is that's typically what it's going to be is no higher than 10 percent and the reason being is that they do the mince after they make all the other cuts of beef and that's just what's left so 
Um, disappointingly, I was not able to get higher fat beef mints from our local butchers because they simply don't do it based on how they butcher the animal. But I can get it prepackaged at the grocery store. And um, it's Red Tractor certified, which means it's come from a farm where they have verified that the animals have been treated properly. So the animal welfare is what it should be. Um, their, their butchering, pro their slaughter processes meet required standards as well. So I know that I don't have to worry about where the meat is coming from, which, which for me is important. Okay. Um, I think that's key, especially when it comes to, you know, ensuring that the farmers who are raising beef cattle uh, or any animal, any livestock for our consumption, that they are part of ensuring the welfare of the animal um, and therefore also making sure that it's the best possible meat, if you will, for our consumption. So for me, that's just really reassuring. If I can't get it from the butcher because of how they, how they um, butcher their beef up, well, then at least I know I'm getting quality meat from the grocery store. So I usually get it, I either get it from Sainsbury's here or I go to Iceland, uh, frozen, which is not ideal, but it's where I often find they always have 20% fat beef and 23% as well, whereas Sainsbury's doesn't always have it. So that aside, um, the one thing that was on my mind that I really wanted to, to share, and this is in tribute to Bart K. Now, he has got what he calls the National Anthem of the Meat Militia, which is one of his YouTube channels. If you're not subscribed, you should go do that now, okay? It's awesome. And it's called the, the Steak and Egg Song. And I believe it goes something like this. Steak and eggs and eggs and steak. That's what you should have for your breakfast. We got it. Steak and eggs and eggs and steak, just in case you missed it first time. Okay, then. I believe it's something like that. If, if I'm off slightly with the lyrics part, I do apologize. But it's very catchy. And when I was sitting here this evening, watching figure skating clips on YouTube, I've never been a figure skater. Don't ask me why I was doing it. But anyways, I came up with my own version, and it kind of goes like this. Okay. Mints and yolks and yolks and mints. That's what I eat for my breakfast with bacon. Yolks and mints and yolks and mints. That's what I like to eat with bacon. So that's my little my little ditty in tribute uh, to Bart K. Um, I take no credit for the tune or even that concept of putting that together in the way I did because that totally is a bit of a ripoff of his national anthem. But what do they say? Uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, I believe is the expression. Anyways, guys, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching my channel. And I know this was a long preamble to the song that I, well, the lyrics I came up with, the tune was already there. Um, it just seemed to fit perfectly. And I just wanted to share with you guys I'm feeling very, very positive these days. Um, to be honest, you know what? In my case, you know, there, I know there are people who have reversed their depression uh, with cutting out the crap, and, and absolutely true, and some have even gone off their antidepressants. I'm not at the point where I trust myself off the antidepressants, but I will tell you what, um, the fact that I was taking them and I was still having bouts of depression, those bouts are gone. And for me, that's still progress. I, that is still healing because I feel as though <clears throat> my antidepressants are actually working. And I'm, I don't know if I'm going to ever come off them. I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't even know how to tell if it's if I need to. Do you, you know what I mean? Like I'm not really sure because I'm not this I'm not the expert. But what I do know 
is that a big reason why the, well, there's two reasons why my antidepressants are actually working. The first one, I got all the carb and processed crap and all that poison out of my body, out of my brain. And because of that, I'm no, I have no fibro fog. My thoughts doesn't mean I'm joyful and happy. Well, I'm joyful. I try to be joyful every day. It doesn't mean I'm happy and giddy and excited and all this stuff all the time because I'm not. When tragedies happen or sad things happen, I'm sad. But being clear-minded by eating a proper nutritious diet has been very, very important. And of course, the other factor is walking with God every day. And, and I know sometimes my, people might be like, well, what does that mean? If you're, if you're Christian, you know what I mean. Totally. And, and, you know, great. That's amazing. For me, it just means I get up in the morning and sometimes I want to listen to worship music or songs that inspire me. Like morning is broken, but the Cat Stevens version almost brings me to tears every time I hear it. And the first time I heard it, I was a kid. I wasn't religious. My parents weren't overly spiritual, really. We didn't really go to church a whole lot. But that struck a chord with me. So if I hear it now, it it's, brings back beautiful childhood memories. And it inspires me. It's awesome. So those are the two keys, right? The two most important things is eating properly to cut all the crap out of my body and out of my brain. So it's not inflamed and praying to God, praying, reading the scriptures, listening to past sermons or messages or inspiring music, whether that is hymns or whatever it is. There are, there's a song, there's a band called Lord of the Lost and they have a song called Constellation and it is beautiful and it's incredible and it's amazing and it always leaves me with chills and they're not they're not Christian I'm not sure what they are but there was inspiration there when when their front man wrote the lyrics and it's beautiful it's a beautiful song um, but that that's what helps me so I had to share this I just felt so filled with gratitude and joy for God for, for being able to say there is something greater than me and I'm so glad that there is because I would have no hope of re continued recovery from my bulimia, from my carb and sugar addictions, from my disordered eating, or even the addiction that comes with those thoughts like I have to track every calorie, I have to measure myself daily, I have to always get on the scale every morning without fail. Those things became addictive as well. They were idols. They were idols before God. And I'm so thankful for the carnivore diet because once the brain fog lifted, I realized how much I needed God back in my life in a deep and meaningful way. And that's the other key. So for me, I wasn't able to come back to God until I cleared the crap literally out of my body and out of my mind until I was able to heal, start to heal physically. I took those steps and now obviously God healed, started to heal me physically when I decided to take care of myself and eat the way he intended. And he did that because he wanted he wanted to talk to me again. He wanted to be in my life deeply, just like he does with everyone. Um, he wanted that. And so, excuse me, um, it was incredible that that moment of this clarity that hit me um, two and a half years ago. You know, I had lost, by that point, I think I'd lost about 40 pounds. I mean, I've lost 80 in total, but I was down about 40 pounds. And even in spite of the progress, I was unhappy with it. I wanted there to be more progress. And I realized my biggest problem wasn't that I wasn't losing the weight fast enough. It's that I was focused on that. 
I hadn't paid attention to the fact that I was healing in so many other amazing ways, such as no more brain fog, reducing inflammation, reducing my anxiety, reducing my depression, having my medications actually work and do what they were meant to do because I wasn't overtaxing them, right? I wasn't overtaxing them. And I had that clarity of, you know what? I, I can, I actually have my brain back and I want to use that to meditate on God, to pray and to worship and to focus on the spiritual things and not worry about where I'm at with the physical things because those will take care of themselves and that's not going to last, that's not going to be forever. Everybody at some point will die. The physical will stop. And that was amazing to me. That was freeing to me. Obviously, if you've seen any of my, my previous posts or videos, that does not mean that those, those negative thoughts that are tied up with bulimia and eating disorders in general, that they don't come back and pop up. And it's always when I feel the most spiritual, on, a, on such a big spiritual high, that's always when those, those thoughts will come and try to take me down. And so realizing that, first of all, they're lies, they're from Satan, they're not true, and that I can just stop and change them. And I'm learning to force myself to go, you know what, that, that's not true. Those lies of, oh, you're just getting fatter, oh, you're not worth it, you're, you're worthless, you're nothing, you're nobody, and all those other things that are very common, at least in my experience, with those of us who suffer from eating disorders or who have suffered, um, I'm really t I'm, I'm realizing that if I stop and acknowledge I'm thinking this way, or as some would say, I'm I'm staying in that moment of negative thoughts just long enough to go, you know what? That's not true. Pause. I'm not that person anymore. And I can then pray for um, strength. I can ask God to help me work through those feelings. I can, that's why I'm forcing myself to wear the things that in the past I would have gone automatically. Nope, I'm going to look fat in that. Forget it. Nope, not going to do it. I'm making myself wear things that I would have run from before because I'm not the person I was before. So I know this is kind of all over the place. Sorry about that, guys. I've just been, I was just so excited to share how I'm feeling and, and, and what's been changing and how I feel so blessed. And yeah, uh, we, in service at church today, we were looking at Psalm 103. But what it did is it reminded me of my favorite scripture, one of my favorite scriptures in Psalm 139. Uh, and it's in verses, I believe, 13 and 14, where it describes how we are wonderfully, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are wonderfully made, meaning who we are is wonderful. And that helped me remember that everything else that rolls through my brain it doesn't mean it's true and doesn't mean I need to acknowledge it. In fact, a lot of the time I should ignore it, right? Like most of us. And that just made me feel so much better. I realize this is a bit of a woo all over the place kind of video. And I do apologize for that. But when I do these, it's because I'm, I'm being, being hit with a moment of inspiration. And so out of honestly, true um, respect and inspiration from Bart's uh, meat and egg song, meat and steak song. I want to close this video off with my version because steak itself I find is too lean for me. Uh, I can have a little bit now and again, like a few bites, but then that's it. I can't eat anymore. Um, so for me, I eat regularly fatty beef, egg yolks, and bacon with a bit of salt, just the flavor. So as I close up, thank you everybody who watches, who is supportive, and who has been sharing my stuff. 
it means the world to me. I just want to connect with um, all sorts of people, anybody who's ever struggled with body image or eating disorder or disordered eating or food addictions and you are trying to work your way through recovery like I am, let's connect. And if we happen to also share the same faith in God, awesome. If that's not your faith, that's okay. Let's let's connect anyways. You know, we can still support each other. Uh, anyways, here we go. I'm closing out with the mince and yolk song. All right. So thank you, Bart K, for your inspiration. And here's my version. I'm not a great singer, but here's what I came up with. Okay. So it goes like this. Yolk and mince and mince and yolk. That's what I eat for my breakfast with bacon. Mince and yolk and mince and yolk. That's what I love to eat and bacon. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Um, hope you enjoy the video. If it's of any help of any kind to anyone, please share it. Please let them see it. And I'm going, I'm planning to be uh, live tomorrow, probably around 2.30 my time. Um, hope you guys will check it out. Hope you guys will join me. Always love having comments and questions. If I don't know the answer, I will try to refer you to somebody out there who I think would be able to answer your questions. Uh, and if you want to just see what I think based on my own personal experience, that would be cool too. And we can talk about anything, whether it's, you know, recovery from an eating disorder, food addictions, disordered eating, um, deepening your walk with God, learning more about God, whatever. Even if you want to just talk about where you're from, what it's like where you live versus being here in England and so on and so forth, let me know. Thank you for your support, guys, and all your love means the world. See you next time. And don't forget our song, right? <gasps> Mints and yolk and yolk and mints. That's what I like to eat with bacon. Mints and yolk and mints and yolk. That's what I like to have and bacon. Bye for now, guys. See you next time.